Hello from ACF Composites. In our previous video, we took a life cast of a head and shoulders and used that to create a plaster bust. In this video, we're going to show you how we made a silicon mould from our plaster head cast, encased it in a fibreglass jacket for strength, and then recreated the head cast in fibreglass. All of the materials shown here are available from our website at ecfibreglasssupplies.co.uk or just search East Coast Fibreglass. First, you need to apply a skin coat or detail coat of silicon. To do this, mix up the required amount of silicon with its curing agent at the correct mix ratio. In this case, we've used our Addition Cure Base Silicon with 10% curing agent added. Mix the two parts together thoroughly. As the silicon and curing agent are both clear, it's important to scrape around the sides of the cup and into the corners and keep mixing well and mix again to be 100% sure that the curing agent is mixed equally into the base silicon. Then, transfer the mixture into a degassing chamber to draw out all the air from the silicon. If you don't do this, then your mould will be full of tiny air pockets, which will create lumps on your final cast. Apply this mixture to your cast. This will ensure all the fine detail has been picked up and will be transferred onto your mould, ensuring the whole head cast is covered. Repeat this two to three times. Then, to speed things up, mix a batch of silicon again, but add a tiny amount of silicon thickening agent to create a mixture that resembles a Vaseline-like consistency. There's no need to degas this mixture. Apply this on top of your detail coat, ensuring you don't create any air pockets. As shown here, when we apply to the lips, we're kind of applying the thickened mixture by rolling it, so the mixture goes into the deepest areas without allowing any air to be trapped. Once the whole head's covered, you can add what are known as registration keys. To make the registration keys, we first made a mould by making these shapes from modelling clay. In this case, we've used Chavant NSP. Then, we build a wall around the shapes. Any flat material or clay can be used to construct the wall. Even Lego is sometimes used for this stage, but we used timber and glued it in place with a hot glue gun. Then, we poured in a resin and talc mixture left it to cure, removed our resin mould, dug out the clay and then poured silicon into the mould to create our registration keys. Use another batch of thickened silicon to glue these registration keys into place. You can also cast flat strips of silicon to bond onto your mould in key areas to strengthen edges and split lines etc. Now we need to create a wall around where our split line will be. This will form our fibreglass, split flange or bolt flange. Here we've constructed this using cardboard, although other materials such as wax based clay can be used. We coated the cardboard in parcel tape to make it non-porous. Then filled any gaps with wax based clay like Naki Plast. Naki Plast is nice and soft and allows us to push it into place without too much force. In areas where the cardboard can't reach, such as the split line around the ear, we've simply built this up with Naki Blast. Next, we applied some resin and fibreglass to make a supporting jacket for the silicon mould. 3mm chopped strands may be needed in awkward areas, such as around the registration keys, before the main fibreglass sheets are applied. These three mil strands are featured later in the video to demonstrate. Once cured, remove the cardboard former and the Naki Plast, apply a release agent to the fibreglass, or in this case, just a quick smear of Vaseline will do. One tip is to apply a few little wedges of Naki Plast or modelling clay onto the outer edges of the split flange, and this will allow you to easily insert wedges later to pry the two halves apart. Next, repeat the fibreglassing stage as before, and leave to cure overnight to reduce risk of shrinkage. When cured, drill bolt holes, cut the ragged edges from the split flanges and sand off any rough areas and fibreglass splinters. 
Using wedges, remove the fiberglass jacket and clean off any loose bits of cured resin from the silicon. Now, cut your split line into the silicon mould. Try to follow closely to the same split line in your fibreglass jacket. You can mark this line off with a pen to help. And then start removing the silicon mould and remove any bits of plaster that are stuck in the mould, as delicate parts such as the ears will most likely break off during the demoulding process. Pop the two halves into their support jackets and then we can start the fibreglass moulding process. Here we're casting the ears in resin as these are too awkward to be able to lay fibreglass into them. And so we're using resin coloured the same colour as the gel coat. Now that the ears have cured, we can start to apply the gel coat layer. Cover the whole area. Try to bring the gel coat close to the edge, but don't get any on the seam line where the two halves are going to meet, as this will stop the mould from lining up correctly when we reassemble it. Once the gel coat is cured, we can start to apply the fibreglass. Here we're using 3mm chopped strands, as mentioned earlier. The 3mm strands will get into awkward corners and areas that the chopped strand mat may struggle to get into, such as around the eyes, nose and mouth. Keep adding and building up the 3 mil strand layers and moving them around until you're happy these areas are taken care of. Now apply the chopped strand matting. Work around the edges first using pieces of matting cut with a straight edge. Remove any strands that may prevent the mould from closing along the seam line. Apply the mat approximately 1 to 2 centimetres short of the edge so it doesn't interfere with the seam line. Once the edges are neatly taken care of, cover the rest of the gel coated areas with fibreglass.
we then repeat this layup on the back of the head, although we didn't need the 3mm strands as there's no awkward areas. Once cured, inspect the seam line and ensure it's free from any strands or hard drips or residues of resin etc. Reassemble the mould, bolting the two halves together and ensuring the silicon mould is perfectly lined up. Then apply a gel coat along the seam line from the inside and leave this to cure. Apply more matting and resin along the seam line to join the two halves together. Once cured, you can start to remove the fiberglass jacket and peel away the silicon mould. You may notice, as shown in this picture, that your first cast may have chalky and white residue from remnants of plaster left behind on your mould surface. However, your second cast, as shown here, should be perfectly clean. This head bust can now be used as a reusable sculpting armature for mask making. This will ensure all masks created using this armature will fit the casting volunteer perfectly each time. Thanks for watching our video, and uh, don't forget all the items we've used in the video can be purchased from our website at ecfiberglasssupplies.co.uk. If you have any questions, stick them in the comments and we'll try to get to them. Uh, or if we don't reply, then uh, reach out to us through our website or by phone.